single thing you can think of is worse under Joe Biden. The, the flowers don't smell as sweet, the <laughs> Wi-Fi is slower, IHOP tables are stickier, boners aren't as stiff, and <laughs> even the fentanyl doesn't hit like it used to. How any Christian can vote for a Democrat, Christian or person of faith, person of faith, how you can vote for a Democrat is crazy. This is what makes it covering Donald Trump so very difficult. What does he mean when he says words? I just wanted to say, look, welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> we are here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will, we, we will endeavor to, forget, oh, oh, oh. to get rid of it and replace it with, with this right here. We'll replace it with this right, all right. here. Amen. That's right, because all glory, all glory is not to government, all glory to God. We're in Moscow tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. Saints be praised. Dude, you are the worst human being I've known to make. I want you to keep it going to this state, to the United States, to everything else in this world. Дорогая, я дома. When your husband spoils you with expensive presents, reads the caption. Russian social media brimming with egg memes. Making light of a new feature of Russia's upside down war economy. Sudden and unexpected price rises. I want to talk about Tucker Carlson and his grocery store video. Be the longest standing feature of Cold War propaganda in the West was the Soviet grocery store. No products, no choices, shoddily made things. Carlson put forth a bizarre hodgepodge of assertions. So we thought it would be interesting to take a look at a contemporary modern day 2024 Russian grocery store, two years into sanctions. He thought the architecture, food and service in Moscow was better than in any American city. Really? Moscow, outside of a small historic center, is filled with drab Soviet-era concrete buildings. And while the food in Moscow can be quite good, better than New York or San Francisco, you need to get out more, Tucker. I went from amused to legitimately angry. Um, so we were guessing what this would cost. Everybody here is from the United States buys groceries, and we didn't pay any attention to costs as we were just putting in the car what we would actually eat over a week. And we all came in around 400 bucks, about 400 bucks. Um, it was $104 US here. It was bizarre. And that's when you start to realize that ideology maybe doesn't matter as much as you thought, corruption. If you take people's standard of living and you tank it through filth and crime and inflation, and they literally can't buy the groceries they want, at that point, maybe it matters less what you say or whether you're a good person or a bad person. You're wrecking people's lives in their country, and that's what our leaders have done to us. Many of his jibes were simply untrue. He praised Moscow, saying it is one of several wonderful places to live because unlike America, Russia apparently doesn't suffer from, quote, rampant inflation, unquote. But using the Russian government's own data from last month, the country's inflation rate is 7.4% almost two and a half times that of America's. That's why interest rates in Russia are 16%, about three times higher than in America. Here's why we're doing it. First, because it's our job. We're in journalism. Lie about what your job is. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna do propaganda, at least do it well. This was just weird. Here we go. So I guess you put in 10 rubles here and you get it back when you put the cart back. So it's free, but there's an incentive to return it and not just bring it to your homeless encampment. In a short video segment shot in Moscow, Carlson shops at a local grocery store and marvels that groceries to feed a Russian family for a week cost maybe a quarter as much as similar groceries would cost in America. This outraged him. And coming to a Russian grocery store, the heart of evil, and seeing what things cost and how people live, it will radicalize you against our leaders. That's how I feel anyway, radicalized. How precisely is diversity our strength? Do you get along better with your neighbors or your coworkers if you can't understand each other? 
or share no common values? White supremacy, that's the problem. This is a hoax. Radicalized. <laughs> in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Lie about what your duty <laughs> is. But Russia's per capita GDP is approximately $15,000 compared to America's, which is approximately $76,000. Stuff costs more in rich countries than in poorer ones. And it will radicalize you unless you understand basic economics. You hear 4.9 and 5% unemployment. The number's probably 28, 29, as high as 35. In fact, I even heard recently 42%. A 42% rate might result in the purge. Americans have a right to know all they can about a war they're implicated in. Freedom of speech, is our birthright. We were born with the right to say what we believe. Carlson should go shopping in Mexico, where his groceries would also be much cheaper. Perhaps he'll gain newfound respect for the Mexican government. Oh, shit. <laughs> Carlson also marvels at the grandeur of a subway station, contrasting Moscow subways favorably with New York's, of course. That's a f nice subway. That's a very... <laughs> The amount of money that's going to be spent is absurd. And, hell, the amount of money that's already been spent is absurd. Trump even says that he already spent $60 million on his damn legal fees. Actually, that's not true. Um, that's the Republican National Committee has spent $60 million on his legal fees. And, of course, Trump's going to put his daughter-in-law in charge of the RNC, so it should be a little more in the next filing. But that's not what this video is about. How does Russia have a subway station that normal people use to get to work and home every single day that's nicer than anything in our country? There's no graffiti, there's no filth, there are no foul smells. While it's true that Moscow subways are excellent, the stations are so grand because they were built by Joseph Stalin at huge public expense to showcase the superiority of Soviet communism. In contrast, New York subways are a product of capitalism, having been built and operated through public-private partnerships of various kinds, which are more budget conscious. It's always been true that centralized autocracies can marshal the entire resources of society to build great vanity projects. Dhaka should go next to see the pyramids and the Taj Mahal. They're amazing. But what if Putin starts saying shit like, World War II was Poland's fault? because they forced Hitler to invade them. I mean, what do you do with something like that? That's gonna be hard. After World War I, this territory was transferred to Poland, and instead of Danzig, a city of Dansk emerged. Hitler asked them to give it amicably, but they refused. Of course. <laughs> of course! Interest rates are back up at some 16%, which is close to the peak that we saw mm. at the start of the war. So people are increasingly paying for this. A veteran FBI informant alleging both the president and Hunter Biden each took $5 million in bribes. The details come from an FBI informant who is very trusted. A highly reliable informant that has always checked out all the information he's ever given us has checked out. We uh, have determined that whistleblower is extremely credible. This is a very yeah. crucial yeah. piece of our investigation. A confidential human source that had been reliable previously to the FBI. A confidential informant that they had on the payroll documented allegations of bribery from a trusted FBI confidential human source has now finally been released. Now its contents are devastating. No less than 85 times on his show, 28 of those segments were Hannity monologues, long ones, on the topic. <laughs> Now, we know that Polish people are as smart as anyone and certainly did not deserve to be invaded by the Germans, who, of course, accomplished that by marching in backwards, so the Poles thought they were leaving. <laughs> he said, I grew up in a country that had cities like Moscow and Abu Dhabi and Dubai and Singapore and Tokyo. New York is one of his favorite cities, he says, but as he sees it, American cities are now broken. Carlson was born in 1969. So the New York of the 1970s, he so fondly remembers, was in fact a city of rampant crime, riots, and graffiti, a city so badly mismanaged that it nearly declared bankruptcy in 1975, 
1977 blackout became legendary for the massive looting and crime it triggered. More than 800,000 people fled the city that decade and real estate values plummeted. It wasn't just New York. San Francisco in that era was seen as a hotbed of hippies, drugs, pornography, and radical experimentation. So we thought it would be interesting to take a look at a contemporary, modern-day, 2024 Russian grocery store. Go on. <laughs> the movie Dirty Harry, portraying out-of-control urban crime, was set in San Francisco in the 1970s. Crime rates in New York today, like in major American cities in general, are way down from their levels even in the 1980s and 1990s. This is how you do it. You make fun and show the seriousness. And at the same time, burn the motherfucker down. I love the poorly educated. We're the smartest people, we're the most loyal people. We're the smartest people, we're the most loyal people. Oh my God. How did I not know Keith's a full psycho now? Because you never go on Facebook. Still the best way to see which old friends are crazy now. All right, here we go. So I guess you put in 10 rubles here and you get it back when you put the cart back. So it's free, but there's an incentive to return it and not just bring it to your homeless encampment. Carlson speaks enviously of cities like Tokyo, Singapore, Abu Dhabi, and Dubai. I've been to all these cities many times, some of them in the last few months, and they are indeed wonderful in their own distinctive ways. But what's striking about all of them is that they are somewhat tame and subdued, the product of authoritarian governments or conformist culture or both. American cities are different. They are the product of decentralization and diversity and democracy. This is the uh, grocery cart escalator. <laughs> this is designed, I'm figuring this out now, where the wheels don't move, they lock on the grocery cart escalator. Look, Ma, no hands. Oh, mother Russia. My favorite part was when he was so impressed with the bread. Wow, bread. Russia is famous for its bread, which is one thing I can assess pretty well. Look at that. It's fresh, too. Look at that. Oh, come on. Mm. The, uh, this guy really likes bread. Uh. Our gross domestic product, a sign of strength, right? But not for us. It was below zero. Who ever heard of this? No one's ever heard of a GDP below zero because that is fucking impossible. And welcome to Hannity. And today was an unmitigated disaster for Fulton County DA, Fawny Willis. Fanny lines blurred, allowing a county DA to bring charges against a former U.S. president is absurd and destructive. Fanny and the lover boy in the hot seat. The Trump Georgia case falls apart. But remember, this isn't a Fannie and Loverboy scandal. It's a Biden scandal. We also have to remember that Joe Biden at this point is essentially a vegetable. And another knock on Joe Biden's leaky bucket of a brain. Obama and the CIA caught cooking the books. Brand new bombshells. What Tucker failed to tell you was that in February of 2022, Russia stole all of Europe's wheat. So surprise, surprise, there's bread. Jane Jacobs, the great writer on urban life, always described the best cities as kind of bottom-up systems, seemingly anarchic, but actually organic, and in the long run, far superior to the abstract drawings of central planners. American cities are expressions of democracy, places where people have to negotiate differences and find ways to live together. That makes them messier and dirtier and sometimes chaotic. But perhaps that is what has made these cities so vibrant and innovative and why they have been at the forefront in making America the country that leads the world in economics, technology, culture, and power. Oh, look, a sale on flour. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Donald Trump is a buffoon. 
and we should treat him as such. If we do it right, this election is a gimme. If we don't go for the jugular, we're gonna lose our country. I don't care, man. Okay, just you. You are the uh, worst human being. I've known to man. I want you to know that we're going to this thing, to the United States, to everything else in this world. I don't care that your daughter's here. What you've done to people's families, what you have done to everybody else in this world. Son. Oops, come on, son. One. This motherfucker doesn't understand how a grocery cart and an escalator work. Do you really believe he has any comprehension of basic economics? Let's be realistic. The first time I ever met Tucker when I was 22, our first conversation was literally, let me tell you about the time that your high school headmaster offended me back when we were both in high school. And he was just so adamant about telling me how much he hated this guy. And I thought it was really funny. But like every time I've talked to Tucker, there's always this sense of like, let me tell you about someone I really, really, really hate. And that sense of resentment, I think, drives a lot of what he does. I think Jim Jordan is not out of the mix. I've talked to a lot of people who still support him. I've actually talked to Democrats who, who trust him at his word. I, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Jim Jordan? I, yes, I've talked to Democrats over the last week on who do they trust, even though they wouldn't agree with him on many issues. He is someone- The Jim Jordan from Ohio? Oh. Um, it doesn't change the, the fundamental facts. <laughs> It does change the facts. They're no longer facts. Those are, not, those are not true. The FBI had an unclassified record that details an extortion and bribery scheme involving then Vice President Biden. We haven't gotten anything from the FBI and DOJ. I guess. Yes. Now remember, this 1023 that was released by Grassley last week. Now we know about this form 1023 that alleges bribery. You have the actual crimes the Biden have, the Bidens have committed. I'm sorry, that was the wrong. That was the wrong footage. Vladimir Putin's Russia, political repression is everywhere. And hundreds have been arrested for daring to honor Navalny so publicly. Of course, this motherfucker's never actually been in a grocery store. He has no idea what he's looking at. It makes absolute sense that he now exists in a world where he didn't realize how Vladimir Putin was going to treat him during that interview he recently. Once upon a time, American conservatives praised America's organic communities, rooted in freedom and choice, built bottom up, not top down. But the new populist right despises these cities. And that disgust is in part a rejection of modern pluralistic American democracy itself. MAGA will govern for 50 years. We go to 24, did you see it? Then it says 28, 32, 36. 40, 44. He's now president for life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, he was able to do that. I think it's great. Maybe we'll have to give that a shot someday. Right? And you know what's very interesting, though? They, there are really people out there think I'm not leaving. Can you believe it? Hey, maybe that is a good idea. It's been obvious to so many of us for years. But we were accused of having Trump derangement syndrome. In a statement to the New York Times, Carlson said, quote, it is horrifying what happened to Navalny. The whole thing is barbaric and awful. No decent person would defend it. Correct. No decent person would. What you're not gonna see in this video is eggs. Because there's no eggs, apparently. There are higher, you are dumb. When your husband spoils you with expensive presents, reads the caption. Russian social media brimming with egg memes. Making light of a new feature of Russia's upside down war economy. Sudden and unexpected price rises. Drive an hour outside Moscow, though, and it's no laughing matter for these pensioners. Of course, we notice it. The pension is 13,000 rubles, says Lubov. That's less than $150 per month. Maybe we buy less meat, says Nadezhda. There's still enough for medicines. Is related to a failure to increase imports enough. 
rid of Roe v. Wade. Well, should the woman be punished for having an abortion? There has to be some form of punishment. We will root out the radical left thugs that live like vermin. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Trump wrote on social media, if you go after me, I'm coming after you. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. I am your retribution. Egg prices rose 18% in December alone. Russian official data shows more than 60% over the year. As images spread of lines forming outside supermarkets, this purportedly from Belgorod in December. Of course, here in America, we have the minimum wage and the 40-hour work week. And OSHA keeping us from getting hurt on the job. Unable to resist a rare dig. Our own production covers our needs in terms of grain, pork, chicken, milk, vegetable oils, and chicken eggs. <laughs> Send some to us. Don't be greedy. And thanks to Barack Obama, about 30 more million Americans have health care. Putin's surprisingly resilient war economy, the egg crisis reveals the biggest problem is not decline, but overheating. Putin says this is about higher demand because of slightly higher wages. Partly true, economists say, but what Putin doesn't say is why wages are up. This labor shortage is a huge issue, right? Where does that come from? Mobilization. I think to me the key issue here is the fact that there are a lot of deaths at war and then they have to be replaced. These people have to be replaced. You know, the Russian officials trying to keep it very quiet, the numbers of how many people have died. And that's the name of the game here. Donald Trump needs people to be afraid. За Трампа голосуют в массе своей не очень умные, примитивные люди, с которыми вот так вот и надо разговаривать. Шаблон. Ну Is Donald Trump at risk of being America's first real political prisoner? We'll see how that goes. The weaker ruble, a direct result of sanctions, has also pushed up import costs for poultry producers. And then there's the wartime spending. President Putin now poised for the next price spike, a threat to his image of stability ahead of March elections, though likely not his presidential shelf life. You know why immigration has exploded? Because America's got the greatest economy the world's ever seen. We're hiring more people than the world has ever seen. Hell, in Arkansas, they're trying to f hire 13 and 14 year old kids. This sort of whack-a-mole situation where the Kremlin has mm. to deal with these pockets of overheating as they happen. Now, obviously what this shows us deep down, especially if you look at the Russian budget for this year, is that they are putting the war first and the people are going to have to keep paying the price. Defense spending, uh, according to projections for this year, will be triple what it was before the war. In Arkansas, they're trying to hire 13 and 14 year old kids with no age verification. So theoretically, a 12 year old or, you know, maybe an 11 year old could pose and they don't even have to be checked. What kind of message do you think that sends? Hell, they're hiring so much in America, they'll hire your 13-year-old kid. The Alabama Supreme Court ruled that embryos created through IVF are children, and that black embryos can be tried as adults. And if he's tall, they'll hire him at 10. I'm Zachariah, Lone Star Liberal. Y'all take it easy. Increasingly, they are dazzled by the clean and orderly ways of dictatorships, populist authoritarians, and absolute monarchies. After all, say what you will about Putin, he makes the subways run on time. It's not a crime. Donald Trump and the other defendants were ordered to pay $463.9 million. $355 million for doing everything right. $363.9 million in disgorgement. White men can Trump. Joe Biden broke the law and she didn't get indicted.